Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. Meditation is a necessary duty to the performance of which people should set themselves, seriously making choice of such times and places for it, so that the duty may be gone about with the best advantage. I shall first explain the duty, and then apply the subject. I am to show what meditation is. It is twofold. Occasional meditation is of some a spiritual thing arising from such occasions as as offer themselves, such as ejaculatory prayer, a short occasional thought. Now, fixed and solemn meditation is when the soul deliberately sets itself to think upon some spiritual thing to the bettering of the heart thereby. This is the meditation in the text in which three things are to be considered. Number one, a choice of some spiritual subject to meditate upon. Many meditate upon sin with delight, and so they ride post or ride quickly to hell with with little noise. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. That's from Psalm 36, 4. Others employ their thoughts only in the meditation of things in the world. But he that would meditate aright must choose some spiritual subject to think upon. And it is needful to select one and not abide in generals. Number two, a calling in of the heart from all other objects. The mind of man is too narrow to be taken up to propose about many things at once, especially with thoughts of diverse kinds. Therefore, David prays, unite my heart. To fear thy name. And number three, employing the heart on the spiritual subject so chosen to think upon it, study it, seriously consider it, and to lay it before our understandings, to move our affections and improve our hearts. Now let us apply the subject. I exhort you to make conscience of this duty of meditation and particularly of Uh, fixed meditation, setting yourselves as solemnly to it as to prayer and other duties. Motives, number one, consider that it is the command of God. It says, commune with your own heart upon your bed, in Psalm 4.4. Meditate upon these things, says Paul to Timothy. Why do you perform other duties but because God commands you? Well, he that bids you do other duties, bids you do this also. Remember, you shall not be ashamed when you have respect to all his commandments. Psalm 119.6 If the command of God hath due weight with you in one case, it will have weight in all. James 2.10 and 11 Number two, it is made desirable by the testimony that it hath from the practice of the people of God. Thus was Isaac employed, and thus David in Psalm 63, 6. Yes, David puts it in the description of the godly man. He meditates on the law of God day and night, Psalm 1, 2. It is of notable use for a Christian's improvement. It much increases knowledge. This is the third thing. I have more understanding, says David, than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. It is the way to comfort under affliction. When David's enemies plotted against him, thy servant, says he, did meditate in thy statutes. It makes a Christian tender in his way. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. It gives a a Christian a sweet relish of the goodness of God. Now, I would lay before you some directions to your right managing of this work. Number one, habituate yourself to occasional meditation, to take up a holy meditation on things that you see or hear, turning them to a spiritual use. This was the practice of Christ, to spiritualize worldly things. None have fairer occasion of it than husbandmen, farmers, whose whose calling 
is so much spiritualized in the scripture. Number two, if your occasions will permit, and sometimes they will, retire by yourselves for solemn meditation, so as you may go about it without disturbance. But sometimes a man may have good occasion for meditation, even while at his employment in the world. Number three, make choice of some spiritual matter to meditate upon. Fix this in the first place so that you may not be rambling from one thing to another. There's a great variety of subjects. God, Christ, his sufferings, the love of God, death, judgment, heaven, hell, eternity, the graces of the Spirit, faith, hope, love, the word and works of God. Number four, begin with a short and earnest prayer either ejaculatory or more solemn. I pray as David, O Lord, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Number five, when you enter the duty, be resolute to go through with it, for Satan will, will strive to divert you so that you do not lack matter. Take these few rules. When you enter upon a subject of meditation, if it will bear it, observe first to begin with a description of the thing, what it is, as what God, faith, love, or, or whatever be the, the matter of, of meditation. Number two, if there be sundry lines of these, observe them, such as faith, feigned or unfeigned. Consider three, the causes, four, the effects, five, its properties, six, its opposites, seven, what it is compared to, and lastly, eight, consider scriptural testimonies. Concerning it. Number six, think and enlarge on the subject so that your heart may be affected and touched with it. And here I would advise you first to get suitable affection and relish of it in your souls and, and to bewail the lack of that relish and, and to desire that which, which you complain that you lack and to confess your inability to do for yourself what you wish to have and, and to petition for the Lord's working in it, and lastly, to believe the Lord will grant your request. Number seven, conclude all with thankfulness to the Lord and committing yourself to him. Number eight, take all outward helps you can for right managing of the duty. Because the sight of the eyes may divert you, it need be, if need be, go into the dark or shut your eyes. And if you cannot get your heart kept while your tongue is not employed, stand not to speak your meditation anyway. Don't hesitate, so long as you are not overheard. The Hebrew word in the text signifies both meditation and speaking. And to make this plainer to you, I'll give you a short meditation on death, enlarged according to these rules. Lord, gather my thoughts that I may profitably meditate on this, which will, which will gather me and all mankind into the grave at length, and open my eyes to see it before I feel it. O oh, my soul, what is death? It is a dissolution of soul and body, a parting of these two loving companions which, which God did unite in the womb. Consider, O oh, my soul, there is a twofold death, violent and natural, and which of them may be my lot, I do not know. Each of these may be done in several ways. Either this life of mine must go as a candle that's blown out, or else will waste with diseases or age until, like a candle, it, it dies out of itself when the wick and grease are consumed. But, oh, what are the causes of death? Why, the cause is in myself. I bear about the seeds of so many diseases as will cut me off at length. But the first cause of all is sin, which brought death into the world with it. Seeing I have sinned, I must die. Now, my soul, cast thine eyes on the effects of death. How does the approach of this grim messenger fill all the body with pains, make the eyes stare? and the face grow pale. When he gives his stroke, the breath goes, the soul departs, the body is left a, a lump of lifeless clay. 
our friends fall a weeping that the dead is gone and they'll see him no more in the land of the living. But what are the properties of death? Why, it is certain, it is, it, well, it is uncertain. It is terrible in its most pleasant shape. It, it is a way we can go but once. If it once goes wrong, we cannot put it right. Oh, my soul, what are the opposites of it? Even life that we now enjoy here, which is sweet, and eternal life in glory, where we shall be liable to no more death. And why should I forget the death of Christ that unstings it, according to Hosea 13, 14? What is death like? To what may I compare it? It's like the blowing out or wasting of a candle. Like the Egyptian jailer who opened the prison door to the baker and butler, restoring the one to the court and sending the other to the gibbet. What says the scripture? You tell me it is appointed unto men once to die. Now, O my soul, how terrible is death. What a king of terrors is this. What need of preparation for it. But alas, how little is my hard heart touched with the consideration of this. How little am I affected with this, which I must feel. Oh, that I were suitably affected with it, that I were wise to consider my latter end. But alas, I cannot command this of myself. I cannot have one serious thought of it. I may as well dig through a rock with my nails as think to affect my own heart with it. But, O oh Lord, to Thee I make my request. Do Thou give me a heart duly touched with it. Thou hast prepared death for me. Prepare me for it. And I desire to believe thou wilt do it, for thou workest all our works in us. Blessed be the Lord who has opened a way that we may be delivered of its sting. And so into thy hands I commit my spirit. Be my God and guide even unto death. Amen.